Hi guys, I just wanted to show you this awesome battery box that I just built for Jason over at Ham Radio 2.0. He had a 50 amp hour PO4 power battery from Gigaparts. I do have a 5% discount code. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick anything up from PO4 power at Gigaparts. But I just wanted to show you the ins and outs of it. And uh, I think it's really cool. It's a fun build and it's a little bit easier to build than the Big Geek actually. So maybe it will hopefully entice you guys to build some battery boxes your own and get creative. So let's check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mega Geek. <laughs> Look at that. So very much a similar design to my Big Geek. Really the only difference is obviously it's bigger and uh, Jason didn't want me to put on any lights, which was awesome because that made my life easier because the lights are kind of the hardest part to do. But taking a look at the front panel, we've got uh, two different power pole inputs or outputs, however you want to look at them. The top one is for the solar charge controller that we're going to take a look at in a minute. The second one here is just a dedicated single uh, circuit. Uh, the, everything's going to its own separate fuse. So when you flip this switch, this is off. Now this is on. The, the, there's a switch for the solar charge controller, but it's inside. We'll see that in a little bit. And then both of these are connected to this uh, switch here. Again, all uh, these two are on one fuse. This is on a fuse. That's on a fuse. Everything's kind of on its own fuse. Then over here on its own switch, I have this uh, QC 3.0. It's, it's a USB outlet. So you've got a QC 3.0 and then two USB PD uh, uh, USBs here. So this turns on and off with the switch, but the, the USB actually has its own switch as well. But I just like to have everything on switches. I don't really need a switch for this, but uh, you can turn it on and off. But I just, I like to do it that way just because I like switches. This meter here is really awesome. I've been using these for quite a few years now. I have these in all of my battery boxes that I build and use. Uh, I get these from, I just buy them on Amazon. They're 18, 20 bucks. Uh, I get two different brands. This one's from Spartan Power. I don't know what's actually in here. We'll find out in a second, but there's another one that uh, has just a different name. They're exactly the same thing, but it's got a hundred amp uh, current limit. It's got a shunt, comes with all the wires and everything you need to uh, uh, make it work and they're just they're really accurate. They show you your voltage, your current used, your current uh, that you're currently using, uh, the time that you're using up here, you see the capacity. So however much uh, I just took this out for a POTA to try it out and I used 5.62 amps and it all has a memory so you can turn it on and off with just this button. And then this button here also is how you can set the voltage. You can clear the memories. Everything is done through this button. Really easy to wire up. I really like these meters. One of the biggest challenges we had because there's a 50 amp hour battery in here was simply finding a box that would fit the battery and also have a, there's a drop in insert in here. And this is from, uh, this is a Milwaukee pack out. You can get these at Home Depot. I'll try and leave links for everything in the description uh, that I can find. Uh, but this, I, th I think this was about 70, 80 bucks. Uh, you can just get them right at your local Home Depot and uh, it's got a nice little handle here. It doesn't really weigh that much because there's a lithium iron phosphate battery in here. There's a nice latch here that you can open up the, the inside. For building, there is a, there's actually a metal stud that goes through these hinges that you can actually just take a screwdriver and pop it out and you can take the whole uh, lid off. Just makes, uh, makes construction a lot easier. So taking a look under the hood, open this up and that has our 20 amp hour BioNO solar charge controller. And right here is the switch for it. So now you can turn that on. You have to have a switch for this because if you just hardwire this into the battery, it'll just constantly stay on. So you got to put a switch on it. This box, there was actually something here, basically replace this and uh, with like a plastic cover, there was just plastic all over this. So I had to I had to Dremel this all out so I could drop the charge controller in there. Uh, I don't like to put them on the front or the side of the box. I just think it doesn't look very good. So I, I try to keep things tidy. Uh, I'm not crazy about the way I secured these, but I, I just secured these with a couple zip ties, drilled some screws into the plastic here, but seems to hold it really well. So that's, uh, that's good enough for me. Uh, here you can see two bolts. That is the, uh, the shunt that all the ground goes to. We'll see that in a little bit. Here's the packet of info that I include with all the battery boxes that I build that just has the, the instructions for the battery and the charge controller, that kind of stuff. Uh, I actually mounted the fuse box underneath this uh, drop-in as well. So that's what these two uh, bolts are for. But that's, 
kind of really you don't need to go any further into this unless you just want to rewire something or or diagnose but uh, the wiring for here it's all 12 gauge silicone jacketed uh, BN Tech Go uh, wire you just pick it up on Amazon it's pretty inexpensive about 30 bucks for for a roll of black and red that are 25 feet long each and uh, I've, I've really been happy with that wire so let's take a look underneath the hood now you do have to do a little bit more uh, surgery on this you'll notice I had to cut out for the for the uh, outlets and stuff here and for the uh, uh, meter there but this just comes out this is why it's so important you got to have a drop-in tray like this that is deep enough to hold the stuff you need but shallow enough to not uh, uh, bottom out on the battery so it just slides in and out and if we take a look underneath here we have the fuse block uh, I really like this it has a plastic cover that comes off and if you say you blow a fuse we can switch this they light up so you know which fuse is blown so that's really nice and I just put 25 amp circuits in all of these so or fuses rather so this one number six goes straight to the uh, top power pole there and then this goes to the bottom this goes to the charge controller and here you can see the shunt these are kind of uh, fun to wire when you have all these I, I direct ground everything so all of your grounds go to the shunt here and then this ground goes back to the battery and basically it's just a resistor that measures how much stuff is going through it these yellow and blue wires connect to the uh, meter there I'll show you that in a bit but uh, that's how I was able to configure all this I, I put everything I, I usually I have the fuse block on top but there just really wasn't a good way to put it in here and I, I thought it'd just be really awkward to have to reach in and, and grab the fuses if, so if something ever breaks you just pop the lid flip uh, change out your fuse put the cover back on and you're back in business so that's uh, the way I decided to do that so let's take a look at the inside now this isn't really like a how to build this type of video I just kind of wanted to show you and if, if you kind of are familiar with DC wiring hopefully this will make a bit of sense but basically you start with the red wire that goes from the battery and then to this terminal on the circuit board or the, the fuse box rather and then that distributes the power to all of the other loads the negative terminal goes straight from the battery and then to this side of the shunt and then all your negatives connect there but um, so for example if we follow the path of the uh, charge controller that's this wire here so basically power from the battery going to here that's going into this part of the switch the center is the load and that goes to the battery side on the charge controller I don't use the load side everything comes from uh, all the loads come from the battery but this part will put the power back into the battery and then this goes to the solar uh, controller then we have these other really three wires but it's kind of all the same this this wire here is for the uh, USB charger and that goes that power wire goes all the way down to this switch here same idea the center is the load and then the the top is the uh, uh, ground in that case and then you just you have to uh, you have to double up on the ground to bring it back to the shunt so there you do have to crimp some of these together over here we've got our power poles this top one is just a straight run from the the black and yellow power pole and it goes straight in to the solar panel input for the charge controller so basically the signal path would be from the power pole to the solar panel to the battery and then to the switch and then the load would actually kind of back feed through the uh, uh, fuse block and then back down in, into the battery that's how that works for the power poles they're all switched uh, pretty much just the way this is but I do have some Wago connectors because you have to jump um, the the black wire it's got to go from the uh, power pole to the Wago to the switch and then you also need to jump it back to the shunt that's how you get all your ground uh, connected and then the bottom one is a little bit more of a cluster because there's two power poles connected to there so I have uh, a five five port Wago which I'm only using four wires in so basically the two blacks from the power pole and then there's a black jumper going to the ground on the switch and then you can follow the black wire here again going back to the shunt so everything goes through the shunt so everything is metered and then talking about this meter uh, it comes with these little wires it comes with two black two red and a yellow and a blue and basically the yellow and the blue 
connect to the yellow and the blue on this and then the uh, there's a black and a red that connect directly to the battery. I have to splice everything together because the wires aren't long enough. So I just have a ring terminal going from the positive and negative, spliced that to the black and the red of the uh, smaller wires and they just tuck in there. There's a little press thing. I'll show you that on a, on a spare one that I have, but they're really, really easy to wire. And then again, same thing, this yellow and blue wires, I had to splice with the black and red and uh, insert them in here. And they, they come with these, uh, uh, fork terminals already on there. That's why I don't have the yellow and the red, or the, excuse me, the yellow and the blue going into there. I figure I'm smart enough to build this. I can probably trace the yellow and the blue and put it in the yellow and the blue there. So that's uh, a look at that. And here's a look at the meter. This one was Spartan. Um, this is the other version, Peace Fair. So Spartan and Peace Fair, I've, I've used both and, and they're both uh, really good meters. Comes with, this is the shunt. They come in 100, 2 amp, uh, 200 and 300 versions, I think. These are the wires that you get with it. It does come with wiring instructions, but it's, it's pretty easy. And basically, you're gonna take the yellow wire that I connect to the uh, side that is all the ground, and then the blue wire connects to the side that's just returning back to the battery. So all your ground connections that you saw, all of those ring terminals are connected here and the yellow wire that gets connected to that. And again, you probably need to splice the wires, but they're very, very easy to install. Uh, once you have everything installed, you, you literally just get a little flathead screwdriver, push this thing down, and they just slide in and then hold just like that. So you do it with your, your black and red, those go directly to the battery, and then the yellow goes to the kind of the load side of the ground of the shunt, if that makes sense, and then the blue wire goes to the fourth terminal and connects uh, with the ground side of the battery. The, the other black and red wires are made, if, if you have too low of voltage, these things need external power. So uh, these bottom two black and reds would just be to power this meter uh, if for some reason you needed it. You shouldn't need it in any 12 volt application, so you can use the extra wires to splice together. And it doesn't really matter which side you use of the shunt, but also let's say all of your grounds are connected to here, you'd connect the yellow wire to this little uh, screw here, and then this would be just the one single ground wire returning back to the battery, and you would just take the blue wire and screw it there, and that's that easy. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this little show and tell of this awesome battery box that I built for Jason. And Jason, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed building it. Thanks for watching another episode of K&MRD Radio Stuff. 73 guys.